Hello, welcome to our Facebook Live today. Hello to everyone in the audience. Uh, we're so glad to see you here. I know it's very, very early for some of our viewers out there, including our guests. So thank you for joining us. Even at these uh, unconventional hours, we like to switch it up here at my heritage. And uh, I see some, I see it's worked because we have some Australians in the audience that were able to join us today um, and others from all over the world. So thank you so much to all of you for joining us. And if you haven't let us know where you're tuning in from today, please please do, please write in the comment section. We'd love to hear um, where you're located, what's the weather like over there, how uh, you're making it through this summer, what you're up to. So please leave us a comment in the comment section. We'd love to hear that. So thank you to everyone who's joining us from all over the world. I see Bridget from Finland, uh, Sandra from Israel. We have Linda from Florida, Miguel from Argentina. Just a few of the, the different locations that we have joining us and tuning in here today. So we have a really fabulous session for today. Before we get to it, I just want to let you know about the MyHeritage DNA sale that we have going on. Uh, we have extended our summer sale. So it is available from now until August 1st. Um, an amazing deal on my Heritage DNA kits. So we'll put a link in the comment section uh, and you can all take advantage of this amazing sale that we have going on to purchase DNA kits for yourself, for family members, uh, friends. So uh, time to stock up on my Heritage DNA kits. We'll put a link there that you can all uh, take a look at. So um, today, this is a, a topic that we wanted to talk about for quite a while. It was actually requested by a lot of our viewers. And this topic is about, uh, you know, what do you do with your genealogy in the future? And uh, how do you make sure that your DNA, family history that's all going to live on after your um, you know, when you're not able to take care of it yourself anymore. So it's a very interesting topic and we're very excited to have with us Thomas McKenty, who is a genealogy rock star really and and we love having him on our show and this is just such a such a perfect topic for him to discuss. So let me bring him onto the screen. He can say to, hello to everyone. Let's see. Hello Thomas. Hi Esther. Hi everyone. How are you? Good. Thank you. Good morning to you. Very this early. Is early. You know, I got my coffee cup with my Illinois map on it. I've got some toast here, you know, but I'm, I'm happy to be here. And you're right. This is one of my uh, big passions uh, is trying to preserve what we've been doing uh, for genealogy and family history and pass it on to future generations. Amazing. So um, before we get started, I'll just let everyone know about a giveaway that we'll do today. How about yes. that? Yes. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. So today we'll be giving away one My Heritage DNA kit to a lucky winner. Um, and all that you have to do is uh, leave a comment in the comment section and let us know how you're using My Heritage to preserve your family history for future generations. Um, so leave a comment in the comment section and one lucky winner will win a My Heritage DNA kit at the end of today's session after the questions. So um, yeah, I think I think now you can take it away. Okay, great. I'm going to do that and I appreciate it. I should be able to, uh, you should see my slides, right? Let's see. There we go. Okay, and I'll hide my little share bar there. So we're here for future proofing and preserving your genealogy. Uh, and this is uh, something that I've lectured on quite frequently. This is actually uh, a lecture that I was asked to develop by FamilySearch several years ago, and it became a big hit. So keep in mind, you know, that you really have little control over your possessions and even your body after you die. Uh, you know, and I'm turning 60 soon, so my thoughts are going to preserving stuff. I have too much junk. Uh, I'm moving soon, all that stuff. And this always comes Back. You can have every legal document you have. You can express your wishes to family members, but there's no guarantee when it comes to those matters. Uh, so the best you can do now is prepare, plan, and communicate. Now, I will tell you, if my family had their way, when I die, they're going to take all my genealogy stuff and have a bonfire on the front lawn. Seriously, they don't get my obsession. Uh, so I have taken some of these efforts to thwart them. Uh, so I want you to seriously think, what have you made? What plans have you made to ensure 
that you your genealogy uh, perpetuates as a legacy. Uh, and so basically it comes down to making a plan uh, and then communicating that plan. And also, don't forget, you can do stuff now. You don't have to wait until you're gone and leave all these instructions. So, so let's talk about the basic planning and what I call data success. Uh, if you don't know my background, I've been doing information technology for almost 25, 30 years before I got laid off in 2008. And then I started doing professional genealogy. I know about planning. I was a project manager for many years. Uh, so the thing is, how do you plan that future? Now, I'm going to have to hit the boring part. You really need to inventory all of your items. Part of the problem is this. Your family wouldn't know what a plat book is. Uh, they wouldn't know why you have certain photos that maybe have different surnames on them. You have to think like your family members. They don't know genealogy. Uh, so they don't know all of this, that you might have a MyHeritage tree, you have a MyHeritage account, how to deal with that as well. Uh, and so here we go. So the first thing is hard copy items. What do you have in terms of hard copy in your genealogy cave? Now, my office looks pretty clean, right? No, you should see under my desk. Uh, I swear there are some days that the camera crew from Hoarders is standing right outside my office window. But the thing is, it doesn't matter what you use. You can use a spreadsheet. Uh, just get it down in writing. In fact, let me see if I can find uh, my one thing. Hold on a minute. Here we go. Uh, so I do have this. Let's go. I, the delay. And uh, did have a little. Yes. Here's an action plan. This is what I created for myself. Uh, and basically, what am I doing? Uh, what's the action? When did I start it? When I complete? And what are the notes? And I can leave this for my family as well. That's the kind of thing that we are talking about. Let's get back to slideshow. That, that's what we're talking about. Also, label each item or include a note. Uh, remember that person, as I said, they're not going to think like you. Uh, they're not going to realize the value of certain things that way. Uh, we're talking binders, folders, stacks of paper. You know who you are. Uh, books and magazines purchased over the years. I'll tell you, they really don't have much use. Maybe out of print books, and we'll talk about that. Uh, your photos, your slides, your negatives, your videos, your CD-ROMs. Uh, what have you done with those? And I know you're like me. Got this big tub or box. Uh, also, if you've got any tech items, Maybe you have a scanner, software programs, flash drives. And then we have all those miscellaneous items. I have audio recordings on cassette tapes from the 1970s. I have a slide viewer. I have all these little gadgets. So that's, that's the tactile stuff, the hard copy stuff. That's pretty easy, but it is time consuming. Also, what about your genealogy data? You may not realize how much information you have. So uh, the thing is, I always make sure I have two backups, at least two backups. One has got to be in the cloud, okay? And then the other one is I'll show you in a bit. This is my new little gadget. If you look at this, and I'll put the link up. This is a SanDisk external solid state drive, uh, two terabytes, size of a credit card. Uh, it's It's got a protective case. You can drop it from up to, I think, three meters. Uh, it's water resistant. Uh, and it just goes in my pocket and can go with me. So these are the things for digital that you need to watch out for. Your genealogy database files. If you're using something like Legacy Family Tree, uh, how to export that into a GEDCOM. Don't forget also, many times when you export, or even MyHeritage, your tree to a GEDCOM, you're not going to get all those media files. So you need to take some time to do that. All your scanned photos and documents. You took the time to scan them to label them. Uh, make sure that you have preserved them and back them up. Uh, digital books, magazines, and guides. Again, not much of a value on this stuff. Also, if you've been writing online like I have, I have a, uh, let me go over to my blog here. And right here, uh, I have a blog called Destination Austin Family. And what it is, is I have a lot of information here about family, et cetera, 
But, you know, when I die, where is this going to go? Who's going to maintain it? Will Blogger shut it down? Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Let me go ahead and close that so I don't break the Internet, right? So uh, also, uh, have you received emails from family with tips and hints? Other researchers, where are those emails? It's as simple, folks, as printing them out if you really want to. Save them out as an MSG file. Uh, also, any other items you believe are important. For me, I've been posting queries and lookups on Facebook. So uh, you might want to go ahead and preserve those, uh, either the link or print them out. And then this one. This is probably the area that we neglect the most. Have you realized how big of a digital footprint you've been creating? Now, I'm at the tail end of the baby boomers. I started with Facebook in 2008, and I'm all over social media for mostly genealogy. Uh, and so, but the thing is, who's going to shut down those accounts? Can accounts be shut down? You know that Facebook, they will allow your executor, your heir, usually a first degree, meaning son, daughter, uh, or something like that, and they will convert it to a memorial page. Uh, so also we'll point out that my heritage has a uh, feature and uh, and I have to be honest, I didn't know about this until Esther schooled me on it. There, there's a way to take ownership and the link is in the handout. We'll post the handout. I'll make sure that you get access to it. But the thing is, once you pass, your first degree relative can request access to that tree so that either they can manage it. They can delete it, et cetera. More and more sites are going that way if you don't know it. Uh, Yahoo, uh, they can uh, disable email. Uh, what else? Google. Google has what's uh, called a data, uh, a legacy error, a legacy person that can handle all of your Gmail, et cetera. So the thing is, sometimes you have to prove it through a death certificate, et cetera. So right now, you should have that conversation now with your family. Uh, and here it is. I spoke to them. Basically, there's an FAQ here. There's a great article uh, about, you know, the site manager passing away. Not a lot of fun not things that we want to talk to, but I think that we really have to. Uh, also, this is what I do. I have a spreadsheet and it has all of my website names, the URLs, the password, uh, login name and password. Uh, I have it password protected. It gets printed out and updated every two, uh, every two to three months. And then it goes in with my legal estate papers uh, so that my family has access to it. Okay, so that's what you can do. Uh, it does, it's not a lot of fun, is it? Well, and believe me, this is what happens. When you start to review your own inventory, you're like, how did I miss these letters from 90 years ago? How, how did I not know about this? So it can be a real eye-opener. Eye so what about working? with societies, libraries, and archives. So if you plan on donating anything, uh, here is a plan you should follow. And really, a lot of these tips I got from the Newberry Library here in Chicago, and they are at, there is, and uh, they're a private library, but they're free. It's an independent research library. They're probably uh, one of the top five uh, genealogy libraries in the Midwest. And so they developed this as part of uh, the tips. Uh, contact the organization. Always check their policies policies before making a donation. Uh, they may have restrictions. They may use what's called a gift deed document. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to have your attorney or executor send a box to that library and say, here, my client wanted you to have that. That's probably the worst scenario. Also, please inform your family members. Let them know what your plans are involving that organization. No surprises after you pass away. If they get a letter from the Newberry Library saying, thank you for your, don your, your mother's donation of blah, 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 and you're like, where is this from? Uh, also, include a monetary donation. It costs money to process anything that you're going to donate, okay? Here in the U.S., the estimate is about $50 U.S. per linear foot. So what's a linear foot? Just measure on your bookshelf, boom, that's a linear foot. It takes 8 to 10 hours. And what do they have to do? Well, a lot of times they may have to digitize, but mostly 
they need to create a visual, uh, a, a finding aid, a way for someone who accesses the library or society in person or online to understand what your collection is about, okay? Uh, also, another option is your, uh, you know, your uh, executor can sell off special items if you have out of print books, things that are of high value to pay for this. In my own planning, I directed a set amount. Also, you can actually donate stuff now, and I highly advocate that. Uh, by donating now, you have more power over it. I'll give you an example, and I'm going to take some uh, coffee here because I'm getting dry metal. I have New York Dutch ancestors going back to 1641 and sitting on a lot of late 1600 letters from my ancestors. Really precious. So what I did is I digitized them and then I donated them to the Schenectady Historical Society in New York. Uh, I know that they're going to be better preserved and safer there. What if I had a flood or a fire or anything here? Okay, so you can gradually do this. The other thing I do, you're not going to believe, is if I have a photo that's rather rare, and I do have one, uh, I will digitize it and send the original to the society. Uh, I don't need the original. I don't get sentimental about family photos and stuff, folks. I can't take this with me. I'm a steward for this information. Uh, so I don't mind printing out that photo on photo paper, putting it in a frame on the wall, and most people won't know the difference. And also, we're going to wrap up with two things, technology. Uh, how is technology going to help you? Okay. Uh, so the thing is, there's a lot of technology out there that can help you with scanning and digitization uh, and also to share information with other people. Uh, so this is the downside of technology. I call it the digital dark ages. Uh, it's very easy to delete something by mistake and poof, it's gone. So if you don't have the hard copy, you know, that's it. Uh, so also, are you still using floppy disks, three and a half inch, uh, USB drives, CD-ROMs? Uh, did you realize that CD-ROMs have a coating on them that can break down after five to 10 years? No, don't panic, but you do want to go and check out those CD-ROMs and try and access them and then maybe put them up in the, a cloud program, uh, anything like that. So I'm going to finish with a few best practices, and then what we're going to do is I will take your questions. I'll also show you uh, a link to that SanDisk, and it will put up the handout as well if Esther hasn't put it up already. Uh, remember, you're going to take inventory. Uh, you can't do this unless you know what you have because you're going to label it, uh, track it, label it, and then that way your family knows. Uh, include this in estate planning. Uh, for us here in the U.S., there is a codicil, which probably anyone can take and make work for them. There's a link in the handout. And basically, this lists all of your genealogy assets remaining that you haven't given away already and what you want done with them. Uh, please back up your data. Uh, it's really, really important. There are great cloud programs out there. There's Carbonite, iDrive, Backblaze. I'm using Dropbox. I bought a two terabyte plan for $99 a year, and all of my genealogy information is there. Uh, Future-proof your genealogy, as I said. Uh, CD-ROM disks, they degrade over time. Uh, also, negatives and movie film, they fade and fall apart. A lot of people don't realize when you put a negative on top of a printed photograph, there can be a chemical reaction. I have actually damaged several of my photos from the 90s because I was sloppy in the way I stored that those items. Uh, have that conversation with family, not very easy, but you don't want any surprises. You don't want them to be surprised by the plans that you have made. And also, contact the organization now. My best way is telephone. Uh, right now with uh, COVID restrictions, which might come back, uh, understaffing, uh, using a website, websites aren't always accurate, email, you know, that can get caught in junk and spam. So I would go old fashioned, old school and call them on the phone and post those items online. If you haven't, don't have a blog or a Facebook group for your family, did you know you can have a private blog? 
uh, you can actually invite people to read it. Uh, that might be a good area for you to start putting stuff uh, if you haven't done that. Uh, and, you know, with your family tree on my heritage or legacy, uh, you know, you, you want to have that there, have as much information up there as possible so that when you do pass, that your successor, uh, whoever it may be, can handle that information. And please do stuff now. Uh, if you don't tell your own stories now, someone is going to tell it for you. Uh, do the genealogy book now. Uh, do interview those family members. Use my heritage uh, to find more information. Upload your photos to my heritage. I mean, it's really important to do that. So I really feel that, at least for me, I have a responsibility to safeguard my research. I've been doing this for 44 years now. This is not play. This is not fun for me. I mean, it is fun. But the thing is, I'm serious about making sure that this is passed down properly. And again, look at the last line. If you don't do something now, someone else will eventually act on your behalf. And it may not be what you want. Okay, I'm going to throw my email address out here before we go back to Esther. Uh, Highdefgen at gmail.com. Please email me with questions about this topic if you have any questions. Uh, that's me and my ugly face. My mother always said I had a face made for radio, so there's your proof. Uh, and then please visit my site. You know, I have over 33 free genealogy cheat sheets over at genealogybargains.com. And I'm going to go ahead and let's see if I can get out of this and go back to live. And I'm going to have to do that. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. I'll there we go. Okay. It always takes right. a minute to get a, to get the screen. Yeah, I know that. I know <laughs> that. Yeah. I know. What did you think of that? I thought that was amazing, and I yeah. love I love that tagline that if you don't uh, if you don't do it, someone else will. And exactly to show us the importance of of writing your own story. This is how you want to be remembered. And right, and exactly. Right. So so brilliant, and uh, and I think it really drives the point home for for all of us because I think we're right. so busy kind of um, documenting our ancestors that we also don't do our own story often. Yeah, if you could share that link to the SanDisk, uh, this is really my greatest toy right now because it can store everything. I really love it. Uh, solid state technology is where it's at, folks. Even my desktop is solid state, which means it boots up rapidly. Uh, and they have less failures than the traditional uh, uh, drives, external drives. Also, what about the handout? Uh, is it accessible? I can post a link to it if no, you want. The link is, we posted the link a few times in the comments Great. section. Cool. So anyone who, um, if you missed it, just kind of look up the comments, uh, look a little bit up in the comments, and we've posted it a few times. Yeah. Um, as well as um, just to let everyone know that if you missed any of today's session, you can, of course, watch the whole thing again um, on the My Heritage Facebook page under the video section, as well as, uh, oh, somebody said the third try, the handout opened. So it should okay. work. Yeah, it should work. Knowledge base. It's uploaded to the MyHeritage knowledge base. Um, but if it doesn't work, I guess try what Betsy yeah. tried and, and hopefully yeah. that'll work. I like, I like Linda's comment. I have a large file box with albums, with pictures and dates, letters or cards, with updates from family members, research books. Also, backup files and photos on Google Drive. Great. As well as external port portable file uh, with two terabytes. That's great. That is great. And we have a yeah. question here from, from Betsy. Um, yeah. She actually asks, what technology or backup has the most longevity? Uh, right now, longevity. you're not going to like this, but the cloud. Longevity, sorry. Yeah, longevity. No, the thing is, it would be the cloud. Because think about it. There's no hardware. There's nothing to break down. Uh, but the other thing, too, this is what I do when I teach this as a lecture. I hold up this thing, and I hold up a photograph, and I say, in 50 years, which one will be more accessible? Well, you're always going to have eyes, we hope. So it's the tactile one, to be honest. Uh, digital stuff can fail. Now, I feel more comfortable with the cloud than I did when it first came out. Uh, Dropbox uh, is the one that I use, and uh, it's encrypted. Uh, I'm notified right away when anyone logs in or shares a file or opens a shared file. So I feel comfortable. I think the best one is right now is the cloud. Uh, so uh, that that's it. Uh, I wouldn't have said that probably five years ago. Esther, does that make sense? 
I don't yes. know where else to. Yeah, yes. there she is. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I think it, it's true. It just goes to show that things change. You know, even a few years makes a big difference. Yeah, and the thing is, though, in terms of keeping up future proofing your technology, if you're sitting, I'm serious. My father in law has so many three and a half inch floppies. It's going to get to the point where they're not going to make a device to access those. Right now, you can get a good uh, floppy drive reader for about $15 US on Amazon. But what if that goes away? Then you wind up taking those things to a service and they'll convert them and they're going to charge you a lot of money. So the other thing I do want to say, Esther, is I'm not a dot zero guy. Do you know what that means? I never, I never upgrade if there's a brand new version like a legacy 9.0. I will wait for 9.1. My theory is this. Why should I be a bug fixer for Microsoft or anyone? Let them settle the bugs on a new version. I'll come around on the point one. You know, uh, but I don't want to let my technology lag so far that I can't get any updates. So you really have to monitor it. Yeah. So true. And uh, Betsy said, I will have to retrain my comfort zone. I think that's really what it's about. But yeah, you, know, you get used to a certain technology or to a certain way of keeping your data. And, and yeah, sometimes we have to kind of make a switch and, and move to something new. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, Petra asks, can I split up my genealogy research to my relatives from two sides of my tree? So by split, do you mean split the tree or just export it out? Uh, yeah, it's it's not easy to, uh, ex once a GEDCOM is there, the only thing you can really do with it is import it to another program. Uh, also, to be honest, I do not like splitting up my tree on my heritage. I know some people do you know, mom's tree, dad's tree. My problem is uh, my mother and father, I think are cousins at eighth cousins, uh, Dutch ancestors, etc. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate that. I would just go through and use one tree personally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, I see Irene's question there. Yeah, she Irene asks, as uh, she says, researching our family tree with my second cousin for the future generations. So we are on opposite sides of the world. What is the best way to link our information? Just set up a tree on family on my heritage, right? Come on. I mean, it's accessible. That's the way that I would do it. Uh, you know, if you if you are going to otherwise, if it's one thing where you want to communicate and share stuff, I really advocate a Facebook group that's private. I've set one up for my family. Uh, Esther, you know I have 41 first cousins. Did you know that? Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, and I have about 85 or 86 you know, first cousins once removed, and my mother wow. was one of 12. So I set up a private family site on uh, Facebook where actually we can discuss a lot of this, and it's not out in the open. Uh, that's another option. But I really would, uh, Irene, try and get your, your cousin uh, on my heritage. Uh, and uh, and work on a tree together. That's how I would do it. Yeah, I actually also have um, have a cousin who set up a, f a Facebook group for um, all the descendants of one of our ancestors, one of our shared ancestors. And what's really nice is that, um, you know, she posts photos all the time and everyone can comment, you know, this right. is this person, it's this right. person. Right. Um, so it's kind of a nice way to and share that's what photos, yeah. Older relatives on Facebook so they can look at these photos and say, yeah, I remember when they left Greece or this or that. This is who they are. Uh, and so remember, we need to gather that info. So, yeah. Uh, we have a question here from Anne, and she asks, if I upload to the cloud, do I still need to keep the originals? Well, this is my theory. It depends on how valuable it is. You know, the only originals that I keep is I have original letters and diaries, even though I haven't digitized. Uh, any vital record certificates I've sent away for, I will keep those. Uh, photos, exactly, things like that. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I don't, I, I don't like a lot of paper. Uh, so I'm very minimalist in terms of that. Uh, but uh, pick a good cloud program, but you still need to have your own external backup where you are. You know, I'm not saying that clouds are uh, totally fail proof, uh, but I've had great luck with the ones that I've been using. Yeah. These are great questions too. Yeah, some really, yeah. really great questions. And, and it's great because I think even just, um, 
I think just it opens up the discussion. I think sometimes people are afraid to discuss this topic. They are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Esther, we have a book here called What If Thomas Gets Hit by a Bus? Oh. It's a bind it's a binder and it has everything in it. Uh, so that my husband can survive uh, without me and my Greek recipes. It has all my logins and passwords and everything. We joke about that. Put that in the book. Don't forget to put that in the book. Uh, but the thing is, it, it's taking a morbid situation and dealing uh, with it uh, with some humor. So I see Janine has a question here about solid state technology. Well, this is what it is. Uh, on the old external drives and also desktop computers, the hard drive, Usually there are moving parts and over time it's going to fail. Everyone is probably going to have a hard drive failure in their lifetime. With solid state, think of this as an exaggerated USB flash drive. There are no moving parts. Okay. Uh, so it's less resistant to damage, but it also greatly speeds up uh, booting up your computer. I have a Dell. Uh, uh, desktop, which is only about, it's a mini, six inches by six inches, solid state drive. I swear, 15 seconds, boom, I'm on. Where, meanwhile, my old one with the hard drive, I'm waiting, I'm getting coffee, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So you'll find that as well. It just moves faster. Things, uh, I couldn't believe how fast it was uh, compared to my old desktop. So that's where the technology is going. They're getting away from uh, the uh, external hard drive, the old technology, and moving to solid state. Um, Elizabeth here in the comments, she says, gosh, I need a binder too from my hubby. I'm screwed if he goes first. Uh -huh. <laughs> but really, it's such a smart idea. And I think especially yeah. with our genealogy, just to write down, you know, yeah. write down all and, those important. And Esther, I'm not, yeah, I'm not exaggerating when I say that, you know, your stuff could be set on fire or tossed away. Because I usually get an email once a month from a genealogist saying, did you know so-and-so passed away? And I drove by the house and there were garbage bags filled with her genealogy stuff out front. You know, it just, it's crazy, you know? And so, but think of it from the family perspective. Uh, they don't know the stuff that we know about genealogy and what we're, even if you've shared some of it, I don't think they know the depth of what you've been doing. So, and also that's, we're advocating uh, for sharing more, right Esther? Of course. You know, share that, yeah. Yeah, I see this comment here from um, Rally who asks, can I share my heritage with my son who lives in another country? So of course, uh, that's the whole advantage of, of having your genealogy on a family history right. site like my heritage. You can invite them um, as members to your family site and they can contribute, collaborate with you. Yeah, this is what I say all the time, Esther. Ge thanks to the internet, geography is no longer our master. It really is. We live without boundaries, without borders now in terms of reaching out to other people. And we should take advantage of that. I think that's especially something that we've learned over the last year. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the other thing I want to say is also, if you're coming, uh, your ancestors came from another country, look for uh, information on Facebook. One is, this is what I've been doing, a lot of Greek 20-something uh, guys and gals have been setting up these little uh, Facebook pages for small towns in Greece. And what they do is they advocate people to upload photos and then they go to the yayas, the grandmothers in town, and they print them out and they say, do you know who these people are? Do you remember when they left? And boom, you get that information like that. They do it for free. Uh, and it was something they decided to start doing during the pandemic, which was ingenious. So, Wow, so yeah. fascinating. Uh, we have a question here from Keith, and he says, yeah. do, low confidence, do low confidence matches count, or is it best to discount them? And that would be on DNA, I assume. I'm guessing uh, he means DNA yeah, matches. DNA. Keith, but if that's not what you meant, Keith, uh, just leave us a message. Yeah, I, th I think it is, but the thing is, I still look at them. I, I don't discount them. I don't discount anything on DNA, uh, but the thing is, uh, they my priority probably will go with high confidence you know, to do that. And uh, Bev does bring up an inter interesting point about solid state drives. Uh, the thing is, if they do fail, they fail. It's not like a hard drive. You can pay 500 bucks US to have recovery. Uh, but the thing is, you need to keep that in mind. So uh, a solid state external drive cannot be the only backup. You really need to be in the cloud as well. Yeah. 
so true. Um, we have this nice comment here from Tambra who said, uh, we had a class at work on protecting your information. I just kept thinking about everything I learned through the years of working with my genealogy. Everything is tied together. You can use the information from this program in your everyday life. And she yeah. said, thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And Janine has something. I am located in Australia. Many years ago, I entered our family tree into a uh, personal ancestral file, PAF. Now we cannot access it. Have you heard of this problem with others? Janine, uh, PAF is no longer supported by family search. What I would do is I would do uh, go to, uh, can I share my screen again? Yeah, let me go ahead and do that. Of course. Uh, yeah, yeah I just want to show something that might be valuable here. And uh, I would go to Family Search, uh, and I'll oh, hide this, sign in, and go up here to Search and go to Research Wiki. Research Wiki is sort of the Wikipedia of genealogy. Uh, it's got ninety-five thousand articles, and then I would go here and I would say uh, personal ancestral file or PAF, and. Yeah, here it is. And they would have information, see, as it was retired, uh, what you can do about it, et cetera. That would be your best approach. Family search is probably uh, the one that I would work with to do that. So, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, and Lori says, I need Thomas to come visit me and help me organize all the information <laughs> on the many lines that I have. My yeah. husband got me binders, but I have yet to put anything in them. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes, you know. But the thing is, you got to stop kicking that can down the road. Seriously. I mean, that's why I got into scanning all these photos. I had photos from when I cleaned mom's house and out in 2006. And here I hadn't scanned them. And what would happen if there were a fire or something, you know. So it's one of those things. Also, get your kids involved. Get your grandkids involved. Nothing wrong with giving them a stack of photos and a scanner and keeping them busy, you know. And uh, so, yeah, I know that this is not an easy topic. Uh, so, but it's something I think. And I, I thank you so much for hosting this, uh, oh, Esther, and my heritage, because I really think it's vital. Yeah. Yeah, so it's such an important topic and uh, just something we've never covered before in our many topics um, that we've done, our Facebook Lives. We really have had, you know, hundreds of Facebook Lives uh, throughout COVID yeah. from the very beginning of yeah. March last year. Right. Um, so, and, and so many great topics and conversations, but um, even the difficult ones are important to- Yeah, they are, best. they are. Okay, yeah. well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Can we do our uh, giveaway now? Yeah, go for it. Okay, great. So um, so we're gonna give away a MyHeritage DNA kit to one lucky winner um, who uses MyHeritage to preserve their family history for future generations. A very exciting gift. And, and obviously the lucky winner, if they've taken a DNA kit, um, can gift it to a family member or a friend, which will also help um, their family preserve their family history. So um, our winner today is Petra Bendova and Petra wrote us and said, I am so thankful to my heritage to get over the difficult times during the pandemic it was my cure to the hard and scary months so yeah it's been a difficult year for everyone um and we're so glad to have continued to bring you family history uh sessions and genealogy and dna and to uh with with some great speakers such as thomas so um thomas thank you so much for joining us today thank you i'll probably see you next month in august so we hope so we hope yes so. yeah okay bye everyone have a great okay. day bye thank you everyone.